Well, welcome back to Turkey Camp. If you watched uh, the last episode, we ended off 20 minutes ago. Got a fire going now. We're just waiting for the sun to set a little bit more and then Nate and I, we're gonna go and try to roost some birds for tomorrow's morning hunt. Basically have four out of five tags filled, so we're just on to Nate's last tag. We have a lot of birds pinpointed. Just gotta find the one that actually wants to play. How's the day been, Nate? It's been good. Uh, <laughs> really good, I would say. We could have shot four today. Yeah, it's been the best day of turkey hunting I've had in my life, which is pretty darn cool. We started the morning off with a bird, you know, five minutes after fly down, and then finished the day off by watching one come in that I didn't quite get the opportunity to shoot with the bow, but, uh, it's been fun. It's been a nice break being out here and hanging out with good friends. Much anticipated. Think about it all through the winter. It's finally fun to be out here. I know. So Steve brought some venison sausage, homemade venison sausage from home to turkey camp. And it's really good. Jalapeno cheddar, so you said. That's good stuff right there. Steve's going to stay back at camp and Nate and I, we're going to uh, hike down to the road pick up our bikes and then we're gonna uh, ride and we're just gonna locate for tonight so just getting a little bit of food in our bodies so the bike in isn't too bad They were here we would hear way better they're, they're up here i think they're on the road on top so like we, oh, I, I think that's a different one i don't think so you don't okay I so i guess he's I, over here then i was thinking he's maybe like i think he's just he's maybe behind this i think he's on this ridge i think they're gonna roost and they're gonna fly down to this road We obviously know the birds where Nate and I roosted, but got back to camp and uh, Steve also roosted a bird. He roosted a bird very close to camp. So I think the, I think the goal is we're gonna work this bird that Steve heard just because it's so close to camp. And if it doesn't pan out, then Nate and I will just bike back over to where we uh, roosted those birds earlier. Because we know that valley has birds, but I guess it makes sense to go after the ones closest to you so we're just gonna do that we're gonna hit the sack and then hopefully the birds are gobbling in the first light i'll see you guys in the morning we got a bird gobbling this way started gobbling by himself this is the one steve roosted last night so he's the one closest to camp so we're gonna work this bird first hopefully things go well we'll be done with him 
things don't go well, then we'll have to head back to where Nate and I roosted those birds last night. But we're gonna try to move in. We're not exactly sure where he's roosted, so kind of moving in blind somewhat. We'll see. birds came down to the road but they never came this direction I think that gobbler had uh, at least a couple hens because we heard a hen yelping when he was gobbling too so that's how it goes a lot of times with uh, gobblers with hens they just they don't come into you they just go where the hens go so we're just gonna keep on trekking
appeared behind the tree and popped his head up. <laughs> Dude, he took forever to show up. <laughs> I heard him drumming and spinning over here, and I'm like, I'm looking on my camera screen, I'm like, where the heck are you? Why are you not here yet? If I had a Tom or a Jake decoy, he would have came running in, beating him up, but... I'm shaking bad now. I don't know if I'm cold or what. Did you see that though? That aggressive calling turned him right around. Started soft calling. He didn't care about us. Aggressive calling. Here he comes drumming and spitting up the road. I mean, I got some really cool footage of him strutting around and going, doing all sorts of stuff there. Dude, I was like, if I had a shotgun, this bird's dead like 30 times. <laughs> Dude, that's... That's bow hunting, man. That's bow hunting. When you do it, you those are the things you just got to accept, man. We should have, before we called, like, I should have, uh, we should have cleared out that left lane for you so that, so that you had two lanes to shoot. Folks, that right there is why changing up a simple tactic while you're calling can just be the difference maker for you right there. We were walking back to camp, as I said, big old strutter in the middle of the road, pulled up into this stuff back in here gave him a couple yelp he did not care we peeked back out he was still doing his own thing and i told nate i was like i'm gonna switch to aggressive calling aggressive calling we got like three different birds and this bird like came in on a string drumming and spitting the whole time but he uh he eventually got suspicious of my hen my decoy because my decoy doesn't move yeah like he took way too long to the point where he he was able to figure out what was going on I did not, dude, when I say I didn't want to call at all, I did not want to call at all. I wanted him to work, just work the decoy. But like I said, he took so long to get to where we needed him to be that he started getting suspicious. And I was like, dude, I got to give some kind of vocalization to like just try and coax him that extra 10 yards so that Nate had a shooting lane. Because we have a like a five yard shooting lane to the decoy and that's basically it nothing else like everything else is just like this twigs and branches i gave like two yelps because I, I i think i think what he did was he went to go and like um scratch himself with his beak so i purposely called at that time to hopefully like make him not be able to pinpoint where i was calling from but that's playing with fire these turkeys they'll pinpoint your location just fine so he pinpointed us he eventually got behind this big old tree right here from me so I couldn't see him. And then instead of going to the decoy, he came up to us, which was where the call was coming from. And then poked his head up and that, that, that was that. Nate shot him like at 10 yards, put the 20 on him. So the arrow just <laughs> right over and then just sailed off into the universe. That was some crazy spitting and drumming action right there. That was way cool. But... That's hunting. That's bow hunting. So he poked, see, he, these That's two trees? Uh -huh. There's a gap to the left. Uh -huh. He poked that his head triangle up right, right there. there. Yeah. You shot him right there? Yeah. No, so I shot him. He then walked down the ditch. And he, he was like, I'm going to start walking out of here. He walked down the ditch, onto the road, turned sideways, and that's when I took a shot. Uh, you know what I should have done? I should have put the decoy further. So that when he came, he, he would have like stopped around here. But hindsight 2020. Obviously, I didn't think he was going to hang up like that. So this is the lane that we were supposed to shoot through. But he was stopping right around here. It's just the way it goes sometimes. We tried hard today. Came close, but not close enough. So I'm just going to eat something really quick. Get some food weight out of my pack throw everything in the pack get on the bikes and bike on out of here but anyway that's gonna do it for this backcountry turkey hunting camp really hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed being out here and hunting so till then i'll see you guys either out on the water or back chasing turkeys again